Okay, so let's start the today's session. So first, uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Today, we are going to discuss about the convolutional neural network. Uh, give me a few minutes uh, to get prepared. Okay, uh, so there is, uh, we have a lecture seven, which is uh, conventional neural networks, uh, which is a specific uh, for type of neural networks uh, that is somewhat uh, different and somewhat advanced compared to the neural networks that we have learned in the previous couple of weeks. And so the previous couple of weeks, what we were learned was mainly single layer per perceptron, multi-layer perceptron, Basically, what we were really learning was feedforward networks. Right? Uh, you don't know whether we have uh, explicitly, I have explained uh, what is a feedforward network. It's right? so a feedforward network is basically we have a set of neurons like this, right? and we have another set of neurons like this. So, so we get some input from here x1, x2, x3, right? And um, these neurons are connected, fully connected, fully connected, or partially connected, or somewhat. The, what really happens is that the, so then there's another neuron at the end or something, right? So the, for example, uh, so making a particular regression or something, right? So the output is coming from, from this point. It's uh, predicted y at. So these are x1, x2 next three right so these are no, these so what happens is when the input is from given from here so this this input is propagating from this layer to the this layer from this this layer to third layer right this is first layer second layer and third layer and then you get the output, right? This is the law of uh, the signal from to this neural network. So this type of neural network is known as so so, so uh, this is known as speed forward neural networks. So known as FFA. Right? So so what is uh, is different in this uh, neural network is that uh, of there are in all the layers there are a certain number of neurons may not be equal or it may be different but what happens is uh, in each of the ne neurons each of the neurons are connected to the other layers to the next layer and is connected to the other layer and so on so the feed is the feed given by this this input is forward forwarded to the uh, in the in part of this neuron, neural network, through this uh, feed forward neural network. So that is why it is known as a feed forward neural network. Right? So, but uh, when it comes to the feed forward network, uh, there are some problems uh, when it comes to processing uh, uh, natural stuff like uh, unstructured information, especially images, uh, sounds, videos. And those kind of stuff, right? So, like uh, basically the signals that uh, that occur in the nature when we want to convert them into a particular digital format, and then we want to process them, or when then we want to learn them with the neural network. Uh, then uh, this kind of neural networks have some problems because uh, uh, these neural networks can be too much uh, uh, computationally expensive and the memory requirement would be much higher uh, when if we try to process the information given by such a, 
uh, such kind of data. For example, if we give some image data, right? So then this x1, x2, x3 would be the pixel data. Right? So if we have like say million the size of so your image is kind of a one thousand by one thousand pixels, right? So it's a suppose it's a black and white image. So then what is the number of pixels are there in the image? One million, right? So when it comes to one million inputs, so x1, x2, x3 to x million, right? So 10 to the power six. So so it should be a very, very large uh, feed for networks. And then when we are computing this uh, this weight addresses, it would be a nightmare to keep for the, when it comes to the memory requirement, right? So it is impossible, basically. And uh, when it comes to computation, also it is extremely uh, difficult because, uh, for example, say now uh, this one is 10 to the power 6, and so also we, we have that kind of com exact computation, right? We will see them. So those are very expensive if we were using the feed forward networks. And also, when there are too much parameters in the this kind of a neural network, then what's the problem? So, if we have a lot of parameters, if say we have enough memory, and if we have enough computation power to uh, process an image, for example, if you want to process a cat Im image classifier, so what you want to do is a cat, cat image classifier. So suppose here in this by hat we get uh, ones or zeros for cats or not cats, right? So the problem is uh, now there are million X inputs. And in each of the layer, there would be a huge computation and huge memory requirement. But say somehow we could satisfy it. But still, now what is the problem? Now there are a lot of trillions of quadrillions of uh, parameters in this neural network. So what obviously happens is when it comes to the number of parameters, we should have enough amount of data samples. Right? If we don't have enough data samples and the neural network is so large, what really happens is overfitting, right? So you have a lot of parameters, but you have limited amount of data. So what happens is this neural network will get easily overfit to the given data set because we don't have like a trillion or quintillion amount of data. Right? So then oh, this neural network will obviously get overfitted. So then we can apply things in the renumeration, but not on because this is this neural network is too large, it would be very difficult. Right? So that is the situation where you we should move into a new form of neural network. So this one is known as convolutional neural network. So we will start with how it was evolved and why it is involved and why it is working correctly. Right? So, we will move into the lesson and see what it is. Really is. So before we move into the neural convolutional neural networks, first uh, we will uh, see what is uh, computer vision and its application in computer science. Right? So because uh, uh, com these convolutional neural networks were mainly developed to handle the computer vision related machine learning problems. Right. So. The computer vision is basically how a computer system or the computer sees the world. So, for example, so when it comes to the structured data like uh, like Excel sheet data, like for like say, say account data, sales data, and so on, which are structured data, but the computer can easily process it, right? But when it comes to vision, for example, if you have a image or have an image or a video which is a stream of uh, images then uh, it is very difficult for a computer to identify what is there in this image so there is no hard code logic that you can write to identify what is there in the image right so because the image can be highly different from each other for example if you take one image of a car and another image of a car, you can't uh, write a simple Python code or something to 
uh, identify which one is a car. Right? This is a, an AI problem. Right? Uh, that means uh, you can't write uh, if you have this amount of uh, within this position, if you have this color, like uh, the color of the tires, color of this uh, body, or so on, uh, and the windscreens, and then you can call it is a car, right? No, right? So you can't do it like that because uh, it is, you can't accept by looking at a image, you can't easily uh, tell the computer what it is, right? So it is identify images, it's a object detection problem. In classifying images, which one is this? It's also a problem. And so that is why the AI should be there. But even before the AI was there, that means the AI was mainstream, the computer vision subject was there, right? For example, even without any machine learning algorithms, there are ways to identify uh, objects in an image and uh, to find, to give some understanding about the images. There are ways like mathematical, analytical ways that were developed to do some computations uh, and some into some of the some conclusions like uh, for example the area of a particular image if it is a very simple but you know it right so or you can see if you draw some particular uh, set of uh, like uh, something like uh, some if this is the image right so this is just a line right you can uh, I told to calculate the length of this line right? by calculating each of the pixels and calculating the number of pixels that were there. So you can write a simple Python code to estimate the length of this line. Right? These kind of things are possible when our image is very simple, like which like uh, if it is only consists of lines and so on. Then we can write some program, right? But uh, if it is a very, if it's a complex one, like uh, if it is like a scenery, uh, like sunset or something like that. So then it is very difficult for a computer program to write the code. Right? So that is, uh, but uh, when it comes to so if we can convert this kind of uh, complex image into a simple form of images like this, where only the edges are there, right? So only the lines are there. Where they, in this kind of image, you will have stuff like uh, the color of grass here and there, the color of mountains, the ice color of ice in the top of the mountains, the color of the sun, which is uh, orange or yellow. It's the, the color of uh, skies. No, and all those things, those things are fine, maybe difficult, but uh, if we can convert this into an edge image, like uh, we are only the edges of the mountains are there, the edges of the sun and clouds are there, then you can write some code to uh, get that down inside out of this image. So there were techniques that were there even before the machine learning was uh, in the mainstream, right? Machine learning came into the mainstream. So, so if you want to uh, get the line image out of an ordinary image, so that is known as the process of edge detection. Right? It's known as edge detection. So, so what is an edge detection? For example, say uh, you have a face. There are two eyes. So I am not going to draw all the other noses and uh, lips and all those things, right? So, so in this image we have, okay, so we have mouth uh, and we have nose, right? So, so what I have drawn is actually not the exact face, right? So we have what I have drawn is actually an edge, right? Edge image of a face. Right? So. What do I mean by edge image is that, uh, so with this edge, so this is a red color line that I have drawn, which separates the background from the 
rest of the color of the image, right? Of the face, right? So this image, this line is uh, the border which is it separates the outside background from the face. So this line separates the rest of the face from the eye itself. Right? This one is separating the nose from the rest of the face. This one is separating the mouth from the rest of the face. So how can we generate it? So when we come to an edge, right? So there you can see there's a huge uh, color. So if you, if you uh, see the intensity of colors, so there would be a huge difference at this particular point. Right, so the outside it may be yellow or something, the color of the bone. When it comes to skin, it may be brown or something. Right, so there's a huge difference at each of the edges. So you can write some code to uh, extract the uh, this information by looking at the nearby pixels. Right, so if you magnify this particular uh, pixels that you, you will see that something like uh, this, right? Yeah, you, you can see like this color is uh, yellow. This color is uh, brown, the skin color. Okay, so this color is having a different color. This color is a yellow color, which is a different color. So these pixels are different right? in color. So if you can write some or to identify there is a color difference between these two pixels, the yellow color pixels and the brown color pixels, then you can find that there is an edge in between these two pixel lines, right? That is how we can draw, draw an edge to separate the face from the background. Similarly, that you can do the same thing to separate the eye from the face, mouth from the face, and so on. So that is how you can convert and convert the image into face. So these things are possible with, without any machine learning, but uh, these things are the foundations that were used for the machine learning as well to learn a particular image. So we will look how, how those things were used in machine learning as well. Right? So. You know, right? So first, this is how our images are set of pixels, which is a matrix of pixels. So by looking at each of these kind of uh, positions in the image, you can simply uh, write some algorithms to extract the edges of, a, of an image uh, without any uh, machine learning or intelligence. Right? We are using that to generate the machine learning algorithms as well. So we will see how, how that really happens. So that is the birth of the convolutional neural networks actually. So these, uh, so these, so I said that uh, we can look at this particular small sec, small set of pixels, right? So actually, we can uh, this this small set of pixels can be known as a filter, right? So fixed size filter. Uh, there can be nine pixels, right? There can be nine pixels that three by three, three by three small part of image, right? Which can be moved here and there around the image. Then we can scan all the uh, scan the whole image by this small three by three window so that we can draw identify the edges in each of the pixels of this image of this original image and we can create generate this edge image right so this kind of uh, small fill small number of windows that are that we can move around the image are known as uh, filters so we also can call it as masks Right, mask me so we can move the mask around the uh, image 
here and there, right? So this is a mask for the filter that you can move here and there throughout the image and we can identify the edges or choose some other features as well, right? So not only the edges that this can identify, but some other uh, other features as well. So, but in this example, we will just look at edges because those are the most uh, primitive information that you can get from an image. Right? If you can remember, right? So in the, in the first lesson or something that we have discussed that uh, with neural networks that we can have different, different uh, depths, right? In each of the layers, we can identify different, different complexities of a particular image, right? Say that now in the first, uh, in the last, uh, uh, last set of layers that you can identify different types of faces and different types of uh, different type different different types of faces right and in the in the earlier layer that you can identify different different parts of the face like the eyes noses Mouths and so on, right? In the first layer, in the very few, the very beginning of the neural network, you can identify some of the lines, right? Edges, which are tilted edges, vertical edges, horizontal edges, and so on. Right? Actually, so the first thing, the very primitive stuff that you can extract from an image are the edges, right? So from the edges that you can actually then you can identify something like the curves, right? So actually in between this step one, this step, there can be uh, constructs like uh, curves, like this curve, this curve. So from this one, you can identify these kind of features from this we just look and identify very bit complex objects like the mouse, north and eyes. That's right, without this one. And so from, from these objects that you can create much more complex objects, right? So these are relevant to different, different layers of the different, different depths of the neural network, right? So that is when we are considering the feed forward network, right? So if you can't remember, just uh, go to the first lesson and see that I have given an image as well. So, a diagram as well, where you can see different, different complexities of faces that you can get from a neural network. So, the same thing happens, the same thing can be done with convolutional neural network, much efficient and much, uh, much uh, less computationally expensive. So, that is the idea of using convolutional neural networks. So maybe we can do it with the same for feed forward networks, but it will be very, very difficult. Uh, and there will be a lot of uh, overfitting, a lot of uh, computational, ex uh, complex, computational expense, you know, cost, cost and so on. So, but with convolutional neural networks, we can use only a few number of weights. Right? So unlike the feed forward network where I would need trillions and quadrillions of parameters with, with few number of parameters, you can, with convolutional neural networks, you can train the convolutional neural network and you can easily use this, keep these weights. So, and use them without much problem, right? Uh, this is also convolutional neural networks are actually much more uh, resistant for this overfitting as well, right? Because uh, there are a lot of information from the images, but only there are only few features. So we will see what are these features and what are these, uh, uh, how it works, right? So, first. so let's see uh, why. Uh, so, what are the things that uh, you can do with the computer vision? So, the basic stuff that you can do with computer vision. The first thing you know, right? So, the, like, uh, Image classification is something like cat image classifications where you can get and have some 
set of images where you can specify whether this has a cat or not. Whether this image doesn't contain any images of cats. Right. So that is unique classification, the simplest thing that you can do with machine learning. And the other thing is object detection. For example, uh, if you use an application of uh, self-driving car, right? So in, this is the road, right? So you can see this is the this is the front of the road, right? So then here you can see some cars, buses, and so on. Right? So you can identify this, these are the tires, right? Not good at drawing, right? So, and there are trees. There are some passengers, not passengers, some people who are walking, pedestrians that are walking in the pavement, right? So, this is the pavement. This is, these are some trees. These are vehicles. So, you can, with object detection, you can identify this object is a car, this object is a bus. This one is a human. This one is a tree. So this is the edge of the road. This is a pavement. So we should not move into the pavement. And we should not hit the trees nearby the road. Right? So those things, objects can be recognized or detected. So this is this requirement is of computer vision is known as object detection. Right? So the other thing is known as neural styles transfer. That is. So Instead of writing anything, that is why this is why I have added an example. Right? So because uh, you can't uh, explain this thing with words, right? So that I have shown some example because to make you understand right? with, without telling anything. Right? Right. So there's another. This this one is uh, something relative to arts, right? So like generating or creating new art. For example, if you want to add this face, some uh, style with these types of uh, this type of you know, to notice this image or anything other it it is. So you have some type of image, right? In this image, so some drawing or something. So we are what we are going to do is we are going to apply this style which is given in this image to the face of the first image. So then you can generate this image. So you might have seen these kind of images in some of the mobile phone apps and some uh, TikTok apps and there are different different things. Right? So you can see some words are generated like in the image, some, uh, some funny images are generated in this manner. Right? In the internet, so, so this is the way it is used. So, what really happens is, so this is actually specific to the to the neural networks. Unlike the earlier image classification and object detection, where with classical machine learning also you can do these uh, operations, do this achieve these requirements up to certain extent, like image classification and object detection. Those things were impossible. Although they were not in the accuracy levels of neural networks, but uh, they were possible. But uh, when it comes to neural trans style transfer, this is what was actually almost uh, as far as I know. I don't know the first there. As far as I know, this one was born with the neural networks. Right? So those things can't be couldn't be achieved with uh, classical machine learning. So with neural networks, only you can you this kind of stuff right so i don't know whether we would have enough time to explain this how we can uh, combine two images or how to not, not just combine right so we take this image and we apply this image the style given given in this image right so not like we are giving the style of this image to the this image so they need to be different what really happens is we are using this image as the base image and then apply the styles given in this image to it. So this is the result. So these things were only possible after deep, deep neural networks. So that is also a 
problem that she puts on with uh, compute permission theory and neural networks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's say that uh, let's do the calculation that I have uh, explained earlier. Right? For example, uh, suppose uh, we are going to, so suppose we have a feed forward neural network. So, so we have explained it earlier, right? So, and now feed forward neural networks. I draw it again. You know it, right? So, this is fully connected. So, here we give the input x1, x2, x3. So here we take the output to the final neuron and then we get the system predicted value right by that. This is x1, x2, x3. So what happens is uh, suppose now is x. So this is the x1, x2, x. So if it is a if this is a thousand image. Uh, thousand by thousand image, and there are three colors for each of the image. That means the image has dimensions of pixels thousand by thousand. Right? So you, you just uh, listen to me and just. Uh, do the calculations yourself right? because uh, when you are uh, when you really want to uh, write uh, neural networks right basically a convolutional neural network or a much advanced uh, transformer neural network basically we will not go to that detail maybe in this lesson but uh, when it comes to convolutional neural network you just uh, want to understand how these dimensions are working right so suppose the image has thousand by thousand image has thousand by thousand size when it comes to pixels and there are two there are three channels right red channel blue channel and green channel right so now what is the size so for each of the image number of pixels is one million right one million is the thousand by thousand this is the this is the number of values that are there in one channel now there are three channels, namely red, green, and blue. So now there are three million uh, values, right? Uh, so then what happens is, so suppose that now this layer has thousand neurons because uh, in order to have three thousand x the last x is the x3000 right so there are there can be x1 x2 x3 x4 up to x3000 right so now there are uh, now there are in this layer there are one suppose now there are 1000 uh, neurons right Yes, say, say the 3000 inputs are connected somehow to the 1000 neurons. Don't think that much, right? So maybe one, several neurons can be connected to, several inputs can be connected to a single input or something. So, so right? So, 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 now what happens is the, the number of, uh, so when it comes to the weight vectors of these neurons, right? So, what is the dimensionality of this weight vector? So that would be 1000 by 3 million, which is 3 billion parameters, right? So now this matrix only for this particular layer, there are 3 billion parameters. That means only for the weight vectors. And actually, if we add the bias vectors, so there are, because there are uh, 1000, Maybe like a three billion plus or one thousand for bias vectors, right? One thousand for 
1,000 biases and there are 3 billion uh, inputs, right? and 3 billion weights. Right? So this is a huge number, right? So 3 billion weights, for example, uh, it's more than 3, three gigabytes, right? So, so for an integer, there are four bytes, right? So when it comes to 3 billion, that would be so 3 by 4, 24 gigabytes of data, right? So if you do the calculation, so for only a single neural layer. So this is not practical anymore because we have to keep that amount of memory. At least this is the minimum amount of data that we need in the memory itself. This is not practical. Uh, and also, the problem of uh, overfitting so it will also be there because uh, when, when you have a huge number of parameters, but uh, we, we have one, we only have uh, very fewer number of uh, sample date images for training, right? So uh, maybe it's around uh, like 30,000 to 100,000 amount of images in the most cases, right? So we will not have like the trillions and quadrillions of images. So training this kind of neural network definitely be causing overfitting and should be a huge problem. So that is what we have to address. Okay, so that is when we have to go to the history of uh, machine learning, right? So actually you might have thought why I have selected this image this kind of image for uh, our slides, right? So this is actually a historical image, right? So if you are interested, uh, what is the history of this image? Just uh, Google uh, Lena. So Lena is a, a model that was there. That was there in about the 40, 50 years back. When the machine learning, uh, or the, not the machine learning, but the image processing was uh, kind of coming into play with the computer. So this one was a kind of a classical image, right? So it was kind of a standard image that was used for machine learning, not, the, not just machine learning, but the image processing and computer vision related uh, modeling. This one was the image that was used. So this is known as the NENA, right? So, this, uh, they are, if you want, you can search for a full image of the Lena. And so, yeah, I'm not going to say much more details about that. So if you want, you can just uh, look into it. And so this one was a kind of standard image that was used in many papers as well. And so that is what I am using. So, so here what I have tried to do is that uh, in this image, you can see different, different colors, right? So because this is a grayscale image, uh, you can see there in this, these points of locations, the intensity of black is very high. In the in this hat, the this it is much uh, lighter gray. This part of the hat it is very light gray. Right, so in eyes it is very hard black. So there are different different gray scale levels. But uh, if you want to convert it in into a much processable like uh, uh, into a state where you can do much more processing, as I explained earlier, we can find the edges of this image, right? So this is the image uh, of Im edges of this image, right? So you can see how the these uh, lines were very bright, where the color intensities are highly different, right? So from here to here, there's a very huge uh, brightness difference. So that is why this line is very color, very bright. Uh, when it comes to little differences like this, you can see very light uh, edges, right? So this edge image is also something that can be generated with computer vision or image processing without using any machine learning. Right? So as I have explained, so you can use some filter, a very small filter, like a pixel size of uh, three by three, 
maybe five by five or something like that. Uh, and we can apply it into all the parts of the image from this side, this side, side, the downside, and so on. Okay, so you can apply it to all the parts of the image, and then you can find the edges. Right, so it is uh, not. So we will explain how to use this kind of filter uh, and apply it into an image and create this edge uh, image. Right? So, so for now, just uh, understand that we can do. Right? So, so this is how this done. Right. So suppose this is the image of original image of Lena. Lena is the name of the that, uh, model, right? So the, the one who is uh, looking at this, uh, this is the Lena image, right? So this is the, uh, suppose this is the pixel, these are the pixel values of the Lena image, right? So it is much higher than this, but I'm, I have just taken some Sample values, right? So three, zero, one, two. Those are, suppose those are the intensities in each of the pixels. So this each of this box is relevant to single pixel, right? This is another pixel, and so on. Right? For each of the pixel, uh, so now this is a image of uh, six by uh, six image, right? Six, six, right? So so this now this is the filter. So, and now say, so this one is a three by three filter. So this, this there are three pixels in this side, then three pixels in this side. So in this, in this filter, we have set some hard coded values. Now, uh, now you just pay attention, right? So what we are doing. Okay, so. So here, what we have done is actually what we are going to do is we are going to we are trying to find the vertical edges. Right? What are the edges that we are going to find? Not all the edges, like uh, not, not all the edges that are there are possible. That is not possible at once, right? So what we are going to do is we are with this filter. What we are going to do is we are going to find vertical images. Vertical means this side. Right? This side, this vertical image. So what we are going to do is we are going to apply this. This so we take this filter, and what we do is first we put it on this first nine three by three window of the image. Right. So now assume right. So this one is over there. Zero is over there. Minus one of this one will be there, right? So, so let me let me make some other color and show it. Because one is there, which is this one. This is zero. This is minus one, right? So this is one, this is zero, this is minus one. Similarly for the other, so also we can say one, zero, and minus one. So this is the filter. This filter is applied first on the in this three by three pixels of the original Lena's image, right? So now what we find, what we are trying to do is we are going to find the mid value. We are going to uh, find a certain value from this image, which is relevant to this image. We are going to predict the value of this image. So actually, it has already given as minus five. Right? So let's say how this minus five is taken. 
right? So what we are going to do is here is that we are going to, to take the linear combination of these x values. So what are the x values? 3, 0, 1, 1, 5, 8, 2, 7, 2. Those are the x values, right? From the image. And these are the these are like the weight, weight values, right? Weight values are 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1. So we take the linear combination of these values with the x value. So how do we take it? We take the multiplications between these values and add them together, right? So you can remember, right? So x t w, x transport w, that is the vector that multiplication we do, right? For the linear combinations. Okay. We, have done, we have done it many, many times, right? For the linear ignition and so on. Right? So here what we try to do is we take these x values and the weight values, 1, 0, 1, so on. So, so, so here we are not, actually we, we are not talking about weight values and so on, right? So I'm just giving you an example, right? So this is before the machine learning era, right? So say, so, so there's nothing like weight values, but I just explained because that is what we should go, right? So these values are actually relevant to the weight values. So at this moment, we haven't trained the weight values or so on. These are hard-coded values, right? One, zero, one. So we understand when we use this kind of filter, one, 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 zero, 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 minus one, minus one, minus one, this kind of filter, if we apply it on a certain image, you can get the vertical lines, vertical edges. That is okay. I don't know whether you still understood, but uh, that is how it happens. We will see how. So what we do is, so we multiply these two. How we do it? Uh, 3 times 1 plus 0 times 0, 0 times 0 plus 1 times minus 1. times minus 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 5 times 0 plus which one? 8 times minus 1 Use brackets for multiplying the negative values. So this one, two times one. So this is one, right? Two times plus two times one plus seven times zero. Plus Two times minus one. Right. Now let's see what is the number. Three times one, three. Zero times six, zero. One, two. One minus one. One times minus one, minus one. Three minus one, two. Two plus one, three. This is zero. So let me check that again. Three. So what is the value that we get? Uh, we will do the calculations here. Three plus this is zero. This is uh, minus one. This is minus one. So this is one. 5 times 0, 0, 8 times minus 1, minus 8, 2 times 1, 2, 7 times 0, 0, 2 times minus 1, minus 2. So minus 1 plus 1 in cut down. Plus 2, minus 2 will cut out. Uh, yes. 3 minus 8 is minus 5, right? So this one. 
this is the value that we get from for the output image or the new image right what is the this new images for the for generating the vertical edges of this original image right so then what we do is so then we would we have at the moment we have calculated the first pixel of the new image now we want to calculate the second pixel of this image right so let's do it as well this one is I can't do all this one, so I can put it on the So, this is So now what we do, so we have calculated for the pixels in this window. Now we have, we can move the, move the window up by one pixel. So now we take the, take this window, right? So now what we are going to do predict is this pixel, right? <laughs> Similar, we take this mask values 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and we do the calculus of 0 times 1, plus 1 times 1, times 2 times minus 1, 5 times 1, plus 8 times 0, plus 9 times minus 1, plus Seven times one plus two times zero plus five times minus one. I will not do the calculation, so you will when we when you do this calculation, you will get the value minus four. Right? You need, because this is recorded, you can uh, go home and actually do the calculations as well. You can listen to this one. Again, if you are not clear, and then you can do the calculation. Right. So then we have to move to the third pixel. So out of the third pixel, we move the window to this location. Then we can apply this mask and we do the linear, linear combination. One times one plus two times zero plus seven times minus one plus one eight times one nine times zero. 3 times minus 1, 2 times 1, 5 times 0, and 1 times 1, minus 1. For this one, you get the value 0. Right? So, similarly, then, then you move the window here, and you can calculate the value of 8. Right? And then, what do you, what do, you do? Then you have to go to the next line. Right. So we have started from here, right? So now we have to move to the next line. And apply this mask the same as earlier. And for this one, so for with linear combination one times one, five times zero, and so on, you can get the value minus ten. Then you can move the window to this location. And you can find the value minus 1, minus 2 to this pixel. Then you move pixel window here. And then you find the value for 2, this 2 from the linear combination. Then you move the window here. And then you find the value 3. Similarly, that then you can Move the window here, here, and so on. Then you can find this, this, this values so up to minus 60. Right, so you can, if you are interested, you can go home and do the calculations. Right? 
so now what you can what you have generated is actually a new image which is uh, only highlighting the uh, vertical edges which are which have bright values and shifted to uh, dark values from this uh, filter so for example if you have a very high value from here like uh, three or something and there is a lesser value at after the this pixel like minus one they, so then so in the middle value we, you don't consider right and then when you take the linear combination one times three times minus one times one three times one three minus one two so the middle value is two that's all. so we do it for the line numbers right so all the line numbers so what happens is you, you will get a higher value for these pixels when there is a vertical edge a vertical reduction of brightness in this in this 12 or 9 pixels right that is what each of the pixel in this image is which says right? how much the images how much the color is reduced in the in the horizontal direction so so when you want to find the vertical edge what you have to do is how much the color is the brightness is reduced in the horizontal direction is measured right so this is what what is done with this filter by applying this filter for all the locations of the image what we try to do is we have we are trying to find uh, what are the images that have higher values for in the left side left three pixels and lesser values or darker values in the right three pixels and we know the what is in the middle and if that is the case when there are brighter pixels at right and the darker pixels in the left then we get some higher value as the middle uh, pixels in the target of the new image right Vert vertical edges image so by applying this filter right by when we say we say that we are applying this filter for this for this image uh, in each of the locations right so this operation by applying this filter on this image is known as the convolutional operation. So this operator is known as the convolution operator. It's denoted by this uh, asterisk mark. Right? So this is not about uh, this asterisk is not relevant to the multiplication, right? So this asterisk is actually used for uh, representing the convolutional operation operator. When we say that we are applying this matrix, the image matrix or the feature matrix with this filter matrix, the convolution with the convolutional operator, we get the output image or the output matrix. Right? Now you can see that the image size is kind of uh, reduced. Right? So the, the it was like six by six image. So once we have applied it with uh, this uh, three by three matrix, three by three filter, target image or the vertical edge image has a two four by four matrix, right? So because uh, the ways that this filter apply on this uh, original image is lesser than the number of pixels of this image, right? so because you can't. Uh, fit the for example you can't fit the filter like this right so because there are no uh, because there are no pixels outside this edge outside this boundary right so this is the boundary right outside the boundary because there are no pixels you can't apply a filter like this right so there are only few ways fewer ways that you can apply so we started from here with this pixel and then we can calculate the value for this pixel and so on so we actually can we can calculate the pixel values relevant to these pixels right 
C is to the ring that is represented by this 4 by 4 matrix. This is also 4 by 4. Right? So this is also 4 by 4. So now you can see now that the image was kind of reduced because there are no, uh, because of the way the filter is applied, the, because the filter can't be applied filter for the filter you have to apply it for all the pixels right? so you can't have empty pixels because of that uh, the new image is reduced in size right we will see why what is the problem and how to avoid it right so so now this one is a much uh, clear explanation of the same example right so in here unlike the previous image where there are three zero one two four two seven four kind of values we have a real vertical edge in this image right so actually actually i have drawn the uh, values the grayscale values relevant to the each of the num numbers values that are there in the pixels right? so Actually, the, those numbers are not exactly the relevant to the numbers uh, values that I have added. Right? So I just added some reasonable number, but not the exact grayscale level. Right? So just to explain you what how to do it. Right? So I, for example, these ones are like the values are zero. So this these pixels are gray in sc scale. Right? These values, these pixels have value of ten. So this part of the image is <laughs> brighter, right? So now you can see this is the darker part. This is the brighter part of the image. So there is a edge in this image, right? So this one is a edge, vertical edge. So what we, are, we can easily detect this edge using this filter, right? So in the filter also we have, they have given some uh, colors, right? So for the zero, this is the color. Minus one, it is uh, much darker. Plus one is darker, right? It's brighter, right? So there's a problem, right? So 10 is much brighter than one. So just ignore it because I, I just had it to explain it, right? So don't think these numbers, gray scales are in the scale, right? So I have just given some mix. This is, I have added this gray scales for because to give you an example, right? So as same as earlier, we can apply this uh, filter with the convolutional operator for this uh, grayscale image, where there is a clear vertical edge in this image. Right? So now, uh, when you apply it in on this image, you can see uh, when you apply it on this. So, so let for for example, just uh, just be clear. Um, the clear the, the unwanted stuff. Right? So first we what we do is we apply it in this box, right? In this window. We apply this filter into this window as explained in the earlier rules. So what happens is uh, one times ten times zero times uh, so these values are middle values are ignored, right? So because those are multiplied by zero, it should be zero. These three values, these three tens will be multiplied by one, these ones. And these three tens will be multiplied by C minus ones. So with these three tens, we will get 30, right? And these three tens, we will get minus 30. With these three tens, you will get zero, right? So plus 30, 0, and minus 30, you will get 0, right? So this for this value, you will get a value of 0. So yes, you can see now the target image also, you have got a value of 0. So, and if you have moved the filter a little to the next position, you can see now the middle part, you ignore it, but for the Left part, 10 times 1, 10 times 1, 10 times 1, that is 30. Then for the right part, 
minus 1 times 0, 0 times minus 1, 0 times minus 1, 0 times minus 1, which is also 0. Middle part is 0. So the left part you get 30. So the linear combination is 30, right? So when you move it here also, you can see when there's an edge between at this uh, at this filter, so there's a real edge. So 10 times 1, 10 times 1, 10 times 10, we get plus 30. It's 0 times minus 1, 0 times minus 1, 0 times minus 1, we get 0. And we get another 30 in this pixel. So then we move on to this window. So you can get zeros because uh, zero times all the values would be zeros. Okay. Similarly, you can see all the other values, zero, 30, 30, zero, and so on. So because I have given the day scales relevant to these values, you can see only the middle part, so this part would be bright eye in color. So this one is a, in this, in this vertical edges image, you can see clear vertical edge, right? So this is the vertical edge. This is the vertical edge that you can see in this image, right? So this is relevant to the vertical edge of this part, right? This is the vertical edge. that you can see in the vertical edge image, right? You get my point? Because uh, this one, the size is reduced, so you can get the values for these locations, this topmost and bottommost values. But for these values, for these pixels, now you, can, you have got the H vertical edge image, right? Which is a bright colored image. So what we did was we have applied this filter in the, and we applied this convolution in, for this original image, then we got this vertical. Vertical edges means. So, any questions? If you have, I can answer. You have any questions? Okay, uh, we will move to the uh, a different image, right? So actually this one is same as this one when it comes to the filter, but there's a difference between the colors of uh, bright colors and the, so in, in this image, this one is bright, this part is dark, but in this image, this part is dark, this part is uh, bright, right? So the bright side and the dark side is different. Then we apply the same filter operator with convolution. So now what happens is then now I'm not going to explain all the, the window operator all the time, right? So you can, if you do the calculation yourself, then now you can go home and if you want, you can calculate it. So instead of having a, a bright colored vertical edge in the target image, in this case, what we have got is a dark colored minus three, minus 30 uh, image, right? So this is a very dark vertical edge in this vertical image because the, the difference of this brightness in this original image 
was not from brighter to dark, but darker to brighter, right? So if when you apply this uh, operator, you will see, right? So you get minus 30 for the middle values, for the edge values and the other values, you will get zero as well, right? So in this case, so if you want to find the edges, maybe you can take the modulus value of this, uh, once you have applied this filter to get the brighter values in all the cases, right? So suppose now if you want to, if your image has both the gradients, edges from always it is, always there are, right? So there are gradients from uh, bright to dark can dark to bright. All you want is a bright colored edge image. Right? So you can, instead of taking the negative values, if you apply the modulus operator to all the pixels in this image, then you can get plus 30, plus 30, plus 30, plus 30 image, which is the same image as this one, right? So what you are doing is you can apply the modulus operator because you have applied the convolutional operator to get the right vertical edges, right? So what we have up explained up to now is only about uh, drawing or generating vertical edges of, a, of an image, right? So not still about convolutional neural networks, but still about the classical uh, computer vision technique where the edges are detected. What right? we have explained earlier was about detecting vertical edges, just like this. So actually you can use the same technique for horizontal edges as well. Right? So this is a horizontal field. Instead of having the one, one, one in the vertical and minus one, minus one, minus one in the in this column, now you have one, one, one in the in this in this horizontal line, zero, zero, zeros in the middle line, and the minus one in the bottom line. So when you apply this filter for an image like this or any image, you can get the horizontal sorry horizontal image. Horizontal uh, edges, right? So by combining these two vertical and horizontal images, you can get the total uh, edges of an image like this one, right? So, although we I said just explained that uh, using a filter you can get, get this edge image. Actually, what might have happened was uh, this horizontal, both horizontal filter and the vertical filters are applied. And this horizontal edge image and the vertical uh, horizontal edge image and the vertical edge image are combined so that uh, we have got the this edge image. Right? Yeah, it has both horizontal and vertical. Uh, edges, right? Okay, so, so this is not the only way you can uh, draw the that you can generate the edges and image. So, how many pixels should be there in the field? So, in this case, we have used the 3 by 3 filter, right? But uh, sometimes you can use much higher number of like five by five or uh, seven by seven, nine by nine, and much larger filters as well. Right? And also you can change the values of this uh, of these uh, filters as well. For example, in the earlier case, uh, what we have used this for the vertical filter, we have used one 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 zero 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 and minus one minus one minus one. But some scientists, some researchers have found that uh, that is not better. So you can use uh, this kind of filter for a vertical filter. 
one, two, one. Instead of one, one, one. Uh, for the zeros are the same. For the right values, minus one, minus two, and minus one are used. So when you apply two and minus two in the middle section, uh, you get higher weight for the middle pixels. It will be better. That is the that is what uh, some scientists have found. So this one is known as the Sobel field. Right. So not only that. So instead of using one one minus one so on, so the middle zeros were there as it is. So you can add the increase the value of weight for the this value instead of one you can have three. Right. So instead of minus one you can have minus three. Right. So for the in the earlier case, one, you can have 10. Or two, instead of two, you can have 10. Minus two, you can have minus 10. So for the three, minus three will be there as it is. So this is known as Scha filter. Scha filter, right? So there are many, many filters that people have found. Researchers have found that uh, this one is working better than the earlier filter. So, and the problem was that uh, there was no uh, bit, there was nothing known as best way of uh, find, defining the filters, right? So you can have different different size filters like uh, three by three, five by five, and so on. And the weights are also different, right? So in this case, you can have in the earlier case you can have one 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 minus one minus one. Then now you can have one two one one two one or, or three ten three minus three minus ten minus three different different ways you can use uh, they have found the uh, but we don't actually know what is the exact way to find best way to do it right so so what <laughs> and there are not only these you know, vertical and horizontal not only the vertical and horizontal edges are Found these filters, but also they can. There are filters that can find uh, edges like uh, 45 degree edges, like these edges, these edges, and 70 degree edges, uh, 72 degree edges, 25 degree edges, uh, 30 degree edges, and 60 degree edges, 62 degree edges, and whatever the angles. Whatever the edges, there are filters that you can define, right? You can define filters for any type of uh, edges with any type of uh, gradient, any type of uh, slope, right? So, how do we know what are the edges that you have to use first, right? So, we don't know, right? So, instead of uh, Hard code in the values for this uh, these filters like one 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 zero 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 one minus one minus one minus one or these values right so now what with machine learning what we can do is we can set them as parameters like weight 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 values w one w two w three w four w five w six w seven w eight right so. However, then now the filter sizes we have selected it as three by three, so we don't change it. But uh, now the values of the filter can be learned using the images, right? So how to do it? So I haven't explained yet, right? So with uh, we have learned about the back propagation, right? When it comes to deep neural networks, with back propagation you can update the with the radiant descent back propagation, you can up set some values for these weight values, which are optimal for uh, these image or set of images, right? So that we are which we are training. Right? So with this kind of filters, you can actually not only uh, we can have arbitrary type of filters, like uh, for example, suppose this. Uh, image contains most of the time the edges which are 74 degrees 
So this pinter can learn that we should have a 74 degree uh, line we detect. Right? So we don't have to assume that whether this is a horizontal filter or vertical filter and so on and the values that you should give. These filters can learn itself the waves that you should be that should be set in this field. Right? So instead of having hard coded values, we can set the, the, the parameters, weight parameters for this filter. And once it is learned, we can apply it for the image and then you can get the new image, which is much more accurate and much more flexible and much more uh, innovative, right? So then the hard coded old school type of filters like these ones. <coughs> so this is the birth of convolutional neural networks. Virtually almost we have we have almost <laughs> finished our time but uh, we have started the uh, we have come to the beginning of convolutional neural network right so what we do is we do the convolutional operator and we apply this uh, filter to this image. Then we learn the weights of this filter. And there can be, actually there can be more than one filter right? uh, to identify different different types of edges and different, different types of uh, features uh, in an image. And those filters are the parameters of or the weight values of the filters are the parameters that we learn in the convolutional neural network. So what we do is we multiply the image with or not the multiply we apply the convolutional operator uh, apply the filter with the convolutional operator to the image and then we learn new images then we compare it with the uh, final images when we find the cost then we do the back propagation and then we update the weight values so that we will get uh, optimum weight values for these filters. So this is about learning convolutional neural networks in basic form. Right? So this is on actually this is only uh, this is not the complete way of complete convolutional neural network. So this is the concept. Right? There are some other parts in the convolutional neural network as well. Right? So not only this. Not only learning this weight values. Right? So now, in the earlier case, we I said that. Uh, uh, so if when when we are calculating the dimensions of this new image with the image and the filter size, image dimensions and the filter dimensions. What are the dimensions of this new image? You can use this formula, right? So suppose the original image is n by n and the filter size is f by f, then the convoluted, convoluted new image size is n minus f minus one times n minus f minus one. Right? So which is bit smaller than the original n by n matrix. Right? So when you are applying, so this is not the only thing that is there in the convolutional neural network. Right? So in convolutional neural network, this is known as the convolution operator, convolutional layer, right? Convolutional layer, a single, this is relevant to a single convolutional layer. So there can be many, many convolutional layers in a convolutional neural network, right? So when we are having many, many such convolutional neural networks, what happens is in each layer, this image size will get, what happens? Uh, what happens? This, this image size will get reduced in each of the convolutional operators. Right? So suppose we have 30 operations, then our image will be highly uh, reduced in size. So that is a problem. Right? So, and the other problem is that uh, when you are applying the convolution operator operation, right? Uh, so this can this filter can only be applied to these kind of locations where some of 
uh, these kind of pixels are only captured only once because this is in the border. This one only be captured with this window, right? So, so no other window will be able to capture this one, this three one, right? So this this one will not capture it. This window will not capture it, right? So because we can't have a window like this. This is not possible, right? Because there are no pixels outside this border, right? Because of that, these values, the border will be utilized lesser. The information will be used lesser than the pixels that were in the middle section of the image. Right? So when it comes to image, pixel, image, pixel like this, this will be covered by this filter, this filter, this filter, this filter, and so on. Right? So this information is used. This information can will be used highly, but this information will be used very little. Right? So that is the that is another problem. So the solution is that we can have instead of using the original border, is this border, we can add a, another border of empty values, which is longer which is in the size of a single pixel or many pixels right yeah all of the so yeah all of the values would be zero and add a new pixel layer we can have the value zero, which is this is this process is known as padding. Right? So yeah, we can, can apply the value zero for each of these uh, adding pixels. So in this way, you can avoid these two problems. One is uh, reducing the image size with the number of layers, and the other one is uh, the using utilizing less amount of information from the border pixels. So this is a, an example, right? So this, this is the original image. So we have added the headings. So the values, so it's so values for this header heading would be zero, right? So in all the process. I haven't added it, so just make sure that those are in number zero and then we can apply the conversion operator with whatever the filter and so filter means which there are the weight vectors weight values and then we can get the, the new matrix or the new image new matrix relevant to the output which should have the same dimensions as the original image right so now you can see this is a six by six matrix. So apply the filter, you can get the six by six filter, six by six output by just adding this uh, add a padding layer of which has a width of one pixel, right? So how to calculate the number of, uh, of this new output uh, you can use this formula right so the output image or the output matrix would be having the dimensions of n minus f minus one times n minus f minus one so you can use this formula to calculate the dimensions of the new, new matrix and it would be same as this one you add the new add that uh, borderline Right. Uh, so there are two ways of padding. So there are two two paddings depending on the convolution. There are two convolution types. One is known as valid convolution. Another one is known as same convolution. Right? So valid valid convolution means uh, we are adding no padding as we explained up to now. Right. So we don't add any pad padding. So what happens is uh, this image size would be shrink uh, and this all the problems would be there. So that is known as valid convolution. 
and the other one is known as the same convolution. Same convolution means we apply the padding. Padding means we can add uh, one layer of padded, padded pixels or two layer of padded pixels or even three layer of or any number of padded pixels. Uh, before we apply this convolution operator, right? So, so we can decide the number of pad, padding layers, uh, which is known, which is denoted by P, right? This can be uh, determined so that the output image or the new image would have the same dimensions as the older image. So, the idea is that if we want to keep the same dimensions as the dimensions of the, the output matrix as the old matrix, you can ap apply the same convolution. So for the same convolution, uh, we can select the padding width or the number of pixels that you add for the, as the padding can be determined by this formula, F minus one divided by two. So what is F? F is the filter dimensions, right? So this is F. F. So in this case, it is three, right? It was three. So the number of padding that you have to get can be determined by the dimensions of the F, which is the filter size minus one divided by two. So you think why? What happens if the uh, if F is a odd even number? So then, if it is O or something, then this cannot this P would not be a uh, full number, right? So this won't happen because F is generally an odd number. That means uh, the number of fil the filter dimensions are given in like three, five, seven, and so on. Not uh, four or eight. Those values are not used for filter sizes. Because of that, you can use this formula to find find the layers of padding that you have to apply before applying this convolutional filter so that you will get the same same convolution which means uh, your dimensions of the matrix would be preserved right okay so that is about padding so there's another uh, Thing that you have to learn about convolution we are uh, i have mentioned that uh, that when you are Suppose uh, I will take another color. So I said first we apply the filter like this, and the second time we apply the filter by moving the first pixel by one to this direction, and then we apply it here, right? So one by one. So Actually, you can't, you can actually move more than one pixel at a time. Like you can move two pixels at a time, right? So after this window, you can move two pixels and use this filter. Apply this window. Right? So after this window, you can apply not, the, not this window, but this window. But because it is not there, you can move into the second row. But here you don't you don't have to use this window because you are, now your stride. So this number of pixels that you skip can be it's known as stride. Right? So in, in the earlier cases that we have discussed up to now, we have used stride of one. Right? So now what we are doing is we are using the stride of two, where we skip two pixels. Uh, Take in the window. So from here to here, we have taken two pixels. From here to here, also, we don't start from this pixel, but 
this this pixel. So you can start from here. Here. And here also we don't go there, we can go go there. And then we don't start from here, we can start from here. In, in, in this in the earlier column also, in the earlier row also, you can start from here. One, two, uh, And yeah, you can't go. You can go to the start. This one is not correct, right? So you can't go to the right. You get the point, right? So you can skip two pixels instead of one, and take the win, move the windows uh, much faster, right? By skipping some of the pixels. So that is known as the stride. So it's stride. What you can do is you can. Uh, shrink the if you want to uh, get less information from the window from the original matrix, you can increase the num increase the stride so that you can get uh, lesser information from or you you don't overlap the filters together and you can do it faster and generate a much smaller matrix as the output from the generation yeah? from the Convolution output, you can get a much smaller matrix and you can do fewer number of convolution operators, which would increase the performance of the computer. So, so this stride is generally denoted by S, right? So when you, if when you are applying the stride, then the new matrix size can be uh, is decided by right this one. So if the original matrix size is n by n and the filter size is s, the stride is n and the padding is p, then the convoluted new matrix would be of size this, right? So this is n plus 2 p minus f divided by stride plus 1. Take the flow value. So this is known as the flow. So means if it is a, a floating point number, we take the lesser number. Right? So if, suppose it is a 5.2, then we take the value 5. If it is uh, 6.8, still we take the value 6, right? So because we take the flow value, that is what is denoted by this one, right? Times n plus 2p minus f divided by stride plus 1, take the flow. So that is the strided convolution. How to calculate the dimension of the strided convolution. Right? And uh, so that is all about uh, convolution, calculating the convolutions in theory. Right? So that may sound a bit uh, complex, but uh, when you go home, just uh, go through the slides and oh, you can listen to this uh, recording as well. So then you would understand. Right? So Basically, a convolutional layer, your convolutional neural network, right, is like this. So I said that a convolutional neural network ha can have several other types of layers as well. We will explain after a few minutes. Right? So the convolutional layer is one of the main uh, component in convolutional neural network. So in the, in the convolution layer is design is like this right? so you have the input feature matrix so the input input image or whatever the feature matrix and then we apply the convolution operator with the filter weights whatever the filter weights it can be three by three or whatever and we add the bias so like if it is same as the can you remember uh, XTW plus B, right? This is the linear combination, right? So not only that, then we apply the what do we do? We apply the activation function, right? Similarly, we apply the activation function, usually the 
value activation. So because this is a deeper neural network, I explained uh, in past weeks that uh, in, in deeper neural networks, inside activation function should generally be trained, right? So oh, uh, similar uh, activation function, right? So generally we use train function, value activation. What happens is we take the input feature matrix, do the convolution with the weights, add the bias, and then apply the ReLU activation. And that is the convolutional layer operation of a convolutional neural network. So what we have learned up to now is about how the convolutional layer works in the convolutional neural network. Right? But there are some other layers in the convolutional neural network as well. So the one important layer is the pooling layer. Pooling layers are similar to the convolutional layers, but uh, it is not uh, taking any convolutional operators with some learned values. Actually, in the pooling layers, they don't have any learned parameters like W or B or something like that. Right, so those are not there. Those any plan parameters are not there. What you do with pooling is you pool the matrix into a smaller matrix. Right? For example, so suppose this is the input uh, input matrix. So what you do is you pool this matrix into four colors. So blue color, green color, yellow color, and red color. Right? And in each of the pool, we, you take the maximum. So that is known as the max pool. Max pool. So we take, first we take this color, blue color, and take the maximum value, which is 9, right? 2, 2, 9, 4. What is the maximum value? 9. So we take into the value 9. So then we take the pool, the second two which is seven three six one so what, what is the largest value the maximum value it is seven so we take the seven as the max pool for the fourth pool also you can take the maximum value which is eight you take the eight here for the last pool you can get a value six which is the largest value is six and so this, this is known as the this is output matrix so which is all which is sm smaller than the earlier one right but uh, the advantage is that you don't have to train any weights or biases to calculate the pooling you just use the you just apply the maximum value the max pooling so you can actually have another type of pooling known as average pooling we are you can take the average of these four values and apply as here, for example, if it is this value, two plus two, nine plus two plus two plus nine plus four, divide by four, like uh, two plus four, by 13, 17, 17 by four is the value that should be, should come to this value if we have used average pool. But generally, average pooling is not used. I mean, the max pool is used in convolutional neural networks in most of the cases. Right? So, average pool is used sometimes. Right? So, that means whatever the way max pooling or average pooling, what we are doing is we are pooling these matrices into nearby regions, the neighbors, and then we take a single value out of the pool and put it into the target or the output matrix. So that is what is done in the pooling layer. So in the convolutional neural networks, other than the convolutional layers, there are pooling layers as well. So there, the thing that you have to remember is that in the pooling layers, there are no headings applied because the idea is to reduce the size. Right? In the pooling layer, this is reducing the size. So no padding is used and no parameters are learned. So, and the output dimensions of the max pool can be can computed with the formula that we have learned for the convolutional 
lower as well. So it's depending uh, lower is uh, n by n and there are no filters, right? So we don't have a filter. Uh, so this is that's nothing one. And we can maybe you can use we got this one. This if you are using striding, you can use the same. This formula to calculate the this strided form. formula can be used to compute the dimensions of the pooling out. Right, so the padding is not there and the filter is not there. But this, this, the filter is not there, but the filter size is 2 by 2. Filter size means the final size. Right? Filter size is there, but uh, that means the filter means this is the filter, right? So this is the filter, although we don't have weights, right? This is the filter. And stride is 2 by 2. Stride means uh, how many fixtures we skipped at each of the time. So we can apply this formula. Then you can this formula same as the conversion layer and cal calculate the dimensions of the pooling lengths. Okay, so this is the this is the way convolutional neural networks are designed, right? So actually there are in convolutional neural networks, there are three types of layers. One is the convolutional layer that we have learned. And the other one is the pooling layers that we have just learned. And the other one is the fully connected layer. So that is fully connected layer is the feed forward neural network layer. Right? So something like this. You, you already know it, right? So we the feed forward network that we have already learned. Actually, not a full so not this is not a two layer one, actually. Right? So you can have whatever the input you can connect to all the layers, also whatever the inputs. So this inputs are given some values. So, so this is a neural layer which is connected to all the values of, of the input and this is known as the fully connected layer. So generally uh, this is the format of a this is the way the CNN's convolutional neural networks are designed. Right? So generally they are starting they have many Convolutional pooling layers one after the other. Convolutional pooling, convolutional pooling, and so on several times. And then the neural network, the final layers are generally several fully connected layers. If it's a classification problem, then convolutional pooling, convolutional pooling, fully connected, fully connected, fully connected. And if it is a classifier, it may be a softmax. So this is how a uh, neural network is designed. So I haven't drawn because it is very large if you have drawn, if you try to draw it. But uh, because now you know what is a convolutional layer, what is a pooling layer, and now already know what is a fully connected layer and a softmax layer. Now you can imagine, so these things, these layers are connected uh, one by one, back, back to the back. And those are learned from in back propagation in this side direction. Right? And that is the convolutional neural network, which is with which is the most complex type of neural networks that we have learned up to now. Right? Because there can be different different types of layers in the uh, convolutional neural network. Actually, there are uh, different types of neural, convolutional neural networks. That are already well drawn and tested, and well tested, and uh, have certain features, so have certain properties for different different tasks. Uh, maybe if we have enough time, we would learn them as well. Right? So this is uh, because conventional neural networks are designed with much uh, much cost and much uh, effort more than the other type that we have learned up to now. So. You can actually design your own convolutional neural network as well, depending on your requirements. So generally, those things, convolutional neural networks are used for image classification, image object identification, and neural uh, style transfer and those kind of stuff. Not only that, but uh, some. So, so here, what we have discussed are the two D convolutional neural networks, but there can be one D neural 
one dimensional neural net convolutional neural networks yeah you can identify the temporal you can train the temporal changes like time wise how the sequences have changed you can learn them with 1d convolutions and you can have 3d convolutions for videos or colored photos because there are three channels rgbs or you can have multiple multi-dimensional convolutional neural networks as well so we are not going that much deeper but uh, we have time let's see whether we can learn about the 3d convolutions and you need some knowledge about tensorflow and tensors basically how to define it in and so on with linear algebra if you want to design those kind of complex convolution and so that is all that i have prepared for the this introductory lesson for cnns if you have any questions you can otherwise uh, you can uh, just start the tutorial that i have okay So, this is so I would stop the recording.